Hi there, this is Glenn Young. Uh, continuing with our series, we're going to take a look at anchors right now. And specifically, we're looking at anchors that you can use at a multi-pitch station on a trad climb or a sport climb where the anchor happens to be bolts, two bolts. In this case, I've arrived at a station and I have two bolts and they're equalized with a chain. So we're going to look at the simplest anchor first, which is simply to take a look at all components. Make sure the chains look good. Make sure these, these are called quick links, sometimes called malleons or rapides. Make sure those look good. And on some rapides, you can even look and see if it's been rated, individually tested or batch tested for climbing. In this case, this says working load of 800 pounds. So that's more than adequate as long as it's in good shape. So that looks like it's in good shape. So we already have an equalized anchor right here, so there's no need to add any more material to this anchor in order to build an equalized anchor. Chain is plenty strong, stronger than anything that I have on me in order to equalize those. So I'm going to take the bottom of that quick link. I'm going to put a locking carabiner through that. And this locking carabiner will now serve as my master point that I can connect to. So I'm disconnecting myself with a clove hitch. Now I can yell down off belay. And I'll then attach my belay device immediately underneath and then pull the rope up and begin to belay. Okay, this next anchor is kind of a classic multi-pitch anchor. It's one of the first anchors that I learned when I started to do multi-pitch climbing. I arrive we're going to pretend these chains aren't here because we do a simpler anchor in this case. I check, make sure that the bolts are good. If they're not good, I try to find another piece of protection. Both those bolts look great. And I'm taking out a double length runner. This is a nylon runner, which is really nice for anchors because it will absorb a little bit more energy than Dyneema, but Dyneema is perfectly acceptable. Attaching my non-locking carabiners so that the gates are opposite and opposed. If they're not opposite and opposed, it's not a huge deal. Take my sew bar, put it close to one end, just offset from one end. Clip it in, point my runner toward the direction that my climber will be coming up. Generally, that's pointing it toward my last piece of protection, whether that's a quick draw on a bolt or whether that is a piece of natural protection like a cam. So pointing it right there, grabbing, and then I'm gonna make either a figure eight, like so, to create a master point. A bigger master point would be nicer. If I need a bigger master point, I don't have enough material, I can also do an overhand on a bite. That's one less twist. And again, for looking at any of these knots, you can take a look at our knots video. Okay, either of those are acceptable. A figure eight tends to come out of the sling a little easier after it's been under load, but either are fine. Clip to the master point and clip my rope in. Okay, lock it down. I've got a nice equalized anchor. This is called the master point. This is called the shelf. I get both of those with that anchor, which allows for a little separation. If this is a little bit low for me to belay, I'll oftentimes put my put myself in on the master point and I'll clip my belay plate in up here, which is really nice because I can pull down a little further. Gives me a little bit longer stroke and I don't have to bend over while I'm belaying, which can be really uncomfortable over time. Okay, the next type of anchor we're going to look at is really common in a bolted environment or an area where you have bolts as anchors. Could be the top of a nice crack climb with bolts or it could be the top of a sport climb. But a lot of times you don't have these nice equalized chains or two chains that come together. So in that case, we're going to need to construct our own anchor. Now the anchor that I prefer to use is a quad anchor because you can pre-construct it. It's plenty strong. It ends up with two separate parts on it for organization at the anchor, which is really handy when you're climbing as a party of two, but is almost essential when you're climbing as a party of three to have that separation in a master point or at least a nice large master point for everyone to get in on. So 
This is how I carry my quad. This quad that I've created is actually made out of 180 centimeter runner. This one made by Blue Ice, it's quite burly. I simply open this up, clip. I'm gonna clip into the bolts here. I could also clip into these rings as long as I inspect them and make sure they're in good shape. I'm not clipping underneath because as you can see underneath, you're gonna end up with this getting crossed over. The real disadvantage of clipping underneath is if I set up a rappel, then this will get loaded and pinch my carabiner in place, making it very difficult to get that out. So I'm gonna clip over the top, to prevent that pitching from happening. And then I've got these two separate legs. So you may have seen some other videos where they're using three. Three is an acceptable use of the quad anchor for top ropes. I prefer usually to do two and two for top ropes with a locking carabiner here and a locking carabiner here. But either is safe. But for multi-pitch climbing, you really want to separate this into two separate loops of two strands. I'm going to take two strands that are closer to me, so further away from the wall, clip a locking carabiner in there, and then attach myself using the clove hitch. You can look at our other basic videos, basic knots, to see how to make that clove hitch. Now I'm attached. Now on this strand, I can identify the direction my climber is coming up, face my plate that side, lock it down, flip that over, and now I'll pull up my rope and load my second into my plate there. Okay, so I'm gonna show how to construct the quad anchor. If you don't have a pre-constructed quad already on your harness, but you have a piece of material that's either 180 centimeters in length or 240 centimeters in length. 180 centimeters in length would be called a triple length runner, and 240 would be a called a quad length, short for quadruple length runner. So my preferred length to make a quad anchor, which has four separate strands, hence the term quad anchor, um, is a 180 centimeter runner. So I'm gonna construct a quad anchor with a triple length 180 centimeter runner. So here I have my triple length runner. First thing I wanna do is isolate the sew bar. So the sew bar is that piece of material there that joins this into one large loop of webbing. I'm gonna put a, a non-locking carabiner up here. You don't have to have lockers um, on your anchor on these points, but you're welcome to. It's certainly safe to do so. I'm gonna clip that in, and then I'm gonna fold my runner in half and clip in the other end making sure that when I pull down, it's equalized at the bottom. Now I'm gonna pinch it off at about one quarter length down and tie a simple overhand knot. I pull down again, find about one quarter length on this side, and I do the same thing. Now I simply clip this side up, and there we go. That's my quad anchor that I've just constructed right there. Okay, for my next anchor, I've arrived, and it turns out that I forgot to take some of my resources off of my second before I left to go up to the top of this pitch. So I may not have a quad length runner, I may not have a cordelette, I may not even have a double length runner, but fear not you can still construct an anchor, okay? One acceptable way to construct the anchor would be utilizing the rope, but that limits things because then if I wanna lead the next pitch, it can be difficult to do so. So instead, I'm gonna use a single length runner that I still have on my harness in such a way that I still have a perfectly equalized anchor with a nice large master point. So again, you saw our previous videos. If you already have chains like this, <laughs> All you need to do is put a single locking carabiner in there, lock it down, that becomes your master point, and you don't need to add anything else to the anchor. So that would be my first choice, is if I have chains. The second choice, if I don't have chains and I need to create something equalized, I take my single length runner that I still have left over on my harness from my previous pitch, 
clip in the non-locking carabiners into the bolts. Making sure there's not going to be any pinching. Okay, and now I take my sew bar of my runner, I put it far at one side, just slightly offset from one of my fingers, and I tie a simple overhand knot in the middle of that sling. Just like so. Oops. <laughs> okay, and then I clip that in. And I move that overhand to the point where I want equalization. So if my climber is coming up to the left, I might want that overhand further to the left. Okay, if the climber is coming up to the right, I'll put it further to the right. Now I'm going to go behind these strands here so between, so I'm clipping through this leg on this anchor side and this leg on this anchor side. Let's make it a little more clear, there we go. And I'm gonna clip a locking carabiner and then move that knot so it's away from the rock. Now what I've effectively done is created two separate legs, an equalized anchor with a carabiner as a master point. So if either one of these legs were to break, there's limit, limited to no extension, very few resources were involved, and by moving this knot away from the rock, I reduced the amount of wear and tear to this sling over time of this moving. Now I use that carabiner as my master point, and I attach myself, attach my belay device, and away I go. Okay, sometimes you're climbing a route that's primarily a trad route, but when you get to an anchor station, there isn't an option to build a trad or traditional anchor, or maybe it's a spot where people descend from. So you're gonna build your anchor, but you didn't happen to bring any slings, or you've used all your slings up in the previous pitch to extend protection. You don't have anything else to construct a normal anchor other than your cordelet. Well, there's plenty of ways you can construct a cordelet anchor off of two bolts. I'm gonna show one of the easier ways to do that. Open your cord up. It's good to have two free non-locking carabiners. You can take these off cams if you didn't have any more slings left, but obviously taking it off a sling and putting that sling over your shoulder is an easy thing to do. Okay. Open this cord up and then take the knot that joins your cordelette together and place that up close to one of your carabiners. Cord's a little kinky, it's a tech cord. Okay, take your other one, clip it through. Now, simply grab where you want your master point to be. So I like a nice high master point. So right in that spot is about right. And you're gonna take all these strands, there should be four of them, one, two, three, four. So all four of those strands and you're going to make a BHK. You can take a look at the other videos to see how to make this BHK. Make a big bite, pass it around my wrist, back down and through, and to tighten it, I grab the tail here and I pull down. So it's a giant overhand knot with this really nice master point that's bomber. It's got four different strands coming out of it. But give me this remaining strands here Sometimes these remaining strands are about the right length to clip it into this carabiner, like so. That would be fine, but this looks a little sloppy to me. So I'm going to just make another overhand around those strands and then pull that up. And then I'll clip that in and out of the way. So it's a little easier to see what's going on at the anchor for my seconds and prevent things from getting tangled up in there. And then I simply clip myself into that master point. Add my device and away I go.